Thanks very much. And um, Charles and I have known each other forever. And I have to say that I worked for him when he was Secretary of State in Education. And he was really the most, one of the, I think you're probably the best boss I had in government. So thank you for that. Um, right, I'm going to do a very informal presentation to you all and just sort of give you a feel about what it's like to uh, chair the Public Accounts Committee. Peter Hennessy described it as the queen of the select committees. Uh, and it is the oldest of all the select committees. It was established by Gladstone. And I have this stunning room overlooking the Thames in the Palace of Westminster, a long one wall. I have pictures of all my predecessors. And among them is Harold Wilson, who, uh, when I said, how on earth did he end up being chair of the Public Accounts Committee? Far too important. In those days, you didn't have MPs didn't have rooms, and we used to have these old-style school desks outside uh, in the corridor. I mean, it's before our time there, actually. Uh, uh, but the old-style way the chair is attached to the desk. And the only Member of Parliament who had a room was the chair of the Public Accounts Committee. So he simply took the job to get the room. <laughs> uh, and apparently filled it with frequent renditions of the red flag. Um, the, the other one, person who uh, I look at and think, oh my God, that's me next, is one of the Guinness family who managed to get himself assassinated in the role. And I think there are plenty of people who would like that to happen to me. Um, it's always chaired by a member of the opposition. That's the tradition, because it's so important to hold, hold the government to a, account. Um, it's, uh, it was, it, I think the reason that we're higher profile and that Charles has kindly asked me to come today is that we're seeing, we're witnessing a renaissance of the select committee system as an essential part, really, of uh, the growing assertiveness of Parliament, I think, since the 2010 election. And I think there are a number of things I want to say about that as a start, as observations around that. First of all, we know, owe an enormous debt around that to Tony Wright who was, who oversaw a lot of the uh, reforms of the select committee system. And one of the reforms he instituted was that we were elected. Until 2010, the chairman, chair, or chairs of all the select committees were really in the gift of the whips, so it was part of the patronage system. I had to be elected by the whole house, and remember, a third of the MPs were new, I'd been a minister all through the Labour years and therefore wasn't really a sort of groupie, House of Commons groupie. And it was quite tough. I was up against five men, managed to, I think, succeed because I think it was a sort of recognition of the way we'd smashed Nick Griffin. Uh, and um, managed to succeed and become the first <coughs> woman ever to be elected. Uh, and um, I think that gives me added status and added authority which allows me to be much more independent in a way that probably wasn't the case uh, beforehand. I have to say to you also, having been elected, I've got better security of tenure in this job than I ever had as a government minister <coughs> when every year you waited for the phone call uh, because I'm there for five years. And it really does make a difference because you, you don't have to do everything today. You can plan your program really over that five-year period, and that's a fantastic privilege uh, of, its, of its own. Why else have select committees become more, more powerful? So one, we're elected. I think the other thing is that after the expensive scandals with MPs, there really is a, a strong drive but across the House by all members of Parliament really to assert the worth of politics and reassert the worth of democracy as expressed through um, the house, Houses of Parliament. And I think if I look, look at the 2010 intake, uh, there's, they're a much more independent bunch than probably I've ever known in my 20 years uh, as a member of Parliament. And I think, again, the final thing I'd say about it is the coalition government. The fact we have a coalition dark government has helped, I think, uh, create greater independence among those who are not part of the government, across the, in all the backbenchers, those who are not part of the government. So one of the sort of advantages of a coalition government has been the strengthening of the legislature or parliament against the executive. So we're in a much stronger position. Now, what's the committee like? The committee has got, reflects parliament itself, so it's got a majority of government members sitting on it. 
Um, so that does mean uh, we produce about 50 reports a year. We're very, very busy. I mean, next week I'm dealing with about five different topics ranging from cyber security through to uh, the serious fraud office and something that went wrong there, through to the Charity Commission and why on earth they didn't oversee uh, charities properly and allowed them to become a tax avoidance scheme, through to um, uh, looking at housing benefit issues. So it's a huge range. We